Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 65 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about the state server session state mode. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 62, 63 and 64 of this video series. Now in the previous session of this video series, we have discussed about the NPROC session state mode. When we use NPROC session state mode, the session state variables are stored on the web server memory inside the ASP.NET worker process. The main disadvantage of using NPROC session state mode is that when the worker process recycles, the session state variables are lost. Now let us see how to use state server as the session state mode and the advantages and disadvantages of using state server. When the session state mode is set to state server, the session state variables are stored in a process called ASP.NET state service. This process is different from the ASP.NET worker process. Now, let's see what is this ASP.NET state service. This ASP.NET state service is actually a vendor service. Okay, the first step in configuring the session state mode as state server is to actually start this ASP.NET state service. By default when we install you know, .NET framework this ASP.NET state service also gets installed on the machine. All we have to do is we have to start the service and to start the service click on start button type run hit enter in the run window type services.msc click OK that's going to open the services management window and within the service look for ASP.NET state service. Okay, by default this service will be stopped, you know, start the service, that's the first thing. So click on start, that should start the ASP.NET service. Now, when we set this session state mode to ASP.NET state server, then all the session variables are going to be stored in this service instead of the ASP.NET worker process. Okay, so that's the first step. And the next step is within the web.config file. So we set the session state mode to state server instead of in proc and then okay now on my machine on this local machine you know the web server is on the same machine the state server is also running on the same machine uh, I mean the state service is also running on the same machine so but in reality you might have a dedicated machine as a state server okay in that case you have to specify the state connection string Okay. Um, now, if you look at this on my on my machine, the state server and the web server are the same. Okay, the same computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the state connection string is equal to TCP/IP, and which is equal to state server. On my machine, it is localhost colon and this port number, the specific port number four two four two four. Okay. So I'm going to set that TCP/IP is equal to, uh, you can give either the name or the IP address of the machine that is going to act as your ASP.NET state server. In my case, it's going to be localhost, so I'm going to say localhost, but in reality, it could be a dedicated server, in which case you give the name or IP address of that dedicated server, localhost colon 42424, that's the port. Okay, so that's all there to it. So we have configured this ASP.NET web application to use state server as the session state mode. The first step is to start the service itself, set the mode to state server, set the state connection string. So where is the state server running? On localhost at this port number. If it's a different computer that's present in a network, you give the name or IP address of that computer and that port number. That's it. Now let's go ahead and run this application as it stands. So when the web form loads, we can enter the name and email. So let me enter the name as Prajim and email as Prajim at prajimtech.com. I click on this go to web form 2. On web form 2, we can see the name and email. Now, obviously, on the button click, as you know, you know the, the name and email are stored in the session variable. So where are these session variables stored now? Since the session state mode is state server, they will be stored in the ASP.NET state service. So inside this service they are stored now, not in the ASP.NET worker process. So if I go to task manager, show processes from all users, there is this w3wp.exe which is the ASP.NET worker process that is used to run ASP.NET web applications. If I set the session state mode to in proc, then the 
uh, session variables are stored here. So if this process recycles, we have seen that in the previous session, what happened? The session state variables are lost. But now the application is using state server as the session state mode. So in this case, the session variables are stored in this service. So even if the worker process recycles, so I'm going to stop this. So I'm going to end this process. So that's killed. Now I go to I go back to the application and I press enter. Look at that. I still retain my session variables. Why? Because they are present in a different process. Okay, in this service. That's why, you know, they, it it's a it's a little reliable now. Okay. So it it survives the ASP.NET worker process recycling. The session variable survives that. Okay, so when the session state mode is set to state server, the session state variables are stored in a process called ASP.NET state service. This process is different from the ASP.NET worker process. The ASP.NET state service is actually a window service. And this ASP.NET service can be present on a web server or it can have its own dedicated machine. Now we discussed about web farm and web garden in the previous sessions. Web garden is a situation where the web application is deployed in a server with multiple processors, whereas web farm is, uh, you know, a web application that is deployed on multiple servers. Okay, so this is how how we configure ASP.NET web application to use ASP.NET state server. First, we have to start the ASP.NET state service uh, in ASP.NET web web dot config set session state mode to state server and set the state connection string to TCP IP, the name or IP address of the ASP.NET state server colon port number four two four two four. Okay, uh, what are the advantages of using state server session state mode? ASP.NET worker process independent. Okay, so when we use this state server as the session state mode, it's independent of the worker process. It survives worker process restart, and we have just seen that. And it can be used with web farms and web gardens. We will have no problem with web farms and web gardens because why? Let's assume this is our state server, and let's say this is a web farm situation because the web application is deployed on three different web servers. Now let's say we have a client here. He requests web farm one. So web form one comes back, you know, the request goes to web server one. That's the first request. So this user doesn't have a session. So it establishes a session, a session ID, you know, gets sent back to the client, which is stored as a cookie on the client computer. And then on web form one, he enters the name and email, and then he submits, the client submits, and the request goes to the same server, let's say, the network load balancer sends the request to the same web server. And then, you know, he presses F5. Okay. Now, when the request goes to the same web server, look at that. On on the click of Web Form One button, we are storing name and email in the session variables. So that gets stored. This web server will store those session variables in the state server here. Okay. It's not stored on the web server now. Okay. So when the request, you know, when this client now refreshes web form 2 in the browser you know the request goes to let's say web server 2 here now this also this web server 2 also has the web.config file in which we it knows to which server to contact to to get you know the session state variables because in web.config file no a web.config file like this will be present on all these servers and within that web.config file, you have the state connection string, which will tell the name uh, of the machine, uh, you know, which has got the ASP.NET state service running. In this case, it's going to be this one. So this web server will contact that state server, get the state variables, and return them back to the client. Even if the request goes to the third web server, it's going to be the same thing. That's why if we choose, you know, state server, which is an out of process session state mode, you know, it, it's going to be available in a web farm or a web garden situation as well. State server offers more scalability than in PROC and that makes sense because, you know, we have a dedicated state server now. So obviously, if, if there are more users, more session variables are created, you know, the web server is relatively free. This, the memory on the web server is not affected. It's only the state server's memory that grows up in size. But web server memory is there to serve, you know, to process the request. So it's definitely, state server offers definitely more scalability than in-proc session state.
mode. What are the disadvantages of using state server? State server is slower than in proc, okay? Because in proc is the best in terms of performance, but since now we have a different server to communicate with, you know, state server is, is relatively slower than in proc. And complex objects needs to be serialized and deserialized. With in proc, we don't have to, you know, serialize and deserialize even the complex objects. But with state server, we have to do that with state server and SQL server. And another important problem here is, um, you know, the state server is on a dedicated machine. For some reason, if the state service itself recycles, look at that, I'm going to restart the service. If I restart the state service, look at what's going to happen when I request this. The variables will be lost. Now look at this, all the web servers will be affected. All session variables will be lost and all the web servers will be affected. We have a single point of failure there. Okay, so that's another disadvantage. If the state server is on a dedicated machine and if the server goes down, all the sessions are lost. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.